In this video, we're going to discuss how to create and edit 3D primitives. Now, 3D primitives can be found on the first top two rows in the basic tab. So all of these guys up in here are the unit primitives or the 3D primitives. Let's start off with making a simple cube, okay? Now, I want to make a cube or a square. So I'm going to click on this little icon right here. And uh, I'm going to left click and drag in the viewport, okay? See, I'm left clicking and dragging and I'm drawing out a box. Now, as soon as I let go of the mouse button, we're going to see a number of UI interface icons. We're going to see little, these little crosses, okay, these guys in here, and then we're going to see some little arrows, okay? Let's go over what each one of these does. These little crosses represent the icon that allows us to adjust um, the position of this top edge along the Y axis. So whenever you see a green cross, that means we're adjusting something along the Y. The red cross is of course, along the X, so we're going to adjust that uh, that right edge uh, along the X axis. Here's the left edge along the X axis. And then it's kind of hard to see, but in the very center here, there's a blue cross. Now, this blue cross allows us to create depth. We can extrude that face out into 3D. Now, once we do the initial extrusion along the Z axis, or the blue cross, we'll gain an, an additional one in the back, okay? So we can adjust it going that way like so, and then along the front. So that's what happens when we do use these little crosses. These, cr these crosses allow, allow us to change the shape, the size of our object. The arrows allow us to change the position of the entire mesh. So we can move the entire cube up or down along the Y axis, which is the green one, left or right, along the red axis, which is the red, uh, the red along the X axis, excuse me, with, along the red arrow, and then front and backwards along the z-axis or the blue arrow. So that's what happens when we use uh, all the little tool handles. Let's look at some of the options because we can continue to edit the shape before we drop the tool by adjusting some additional options in our tool properties. Okay, the first one. Let's look at segments. Of course, and well, let's start at the top. Position. This is the position of our cube, our, our primitive in three-dimensional space. So if we wanted this red, the origin, we could put this at zero, zero, zero. And now our shape, oop, looks like I didn't, there we go. Now our shape is at the origin or the center of our three-dimensional scene. We can also numerically change the size of our shape if we wanted to. Notice that when I change the location of these little crosses, we're ultimately changing the size of our shape, which is kind of cool. Now the segments, this is going to divide up our geometry. This is going to add new edge segments along a certain axis. So let's increase the edge segments along the X axis. Let's make it to two. And you can see that we've added three new edge, uh, edge loops along the X axis. So that's what that segments is going to do. Okay. So that's the cube primitive. I want to delete this guy real fast and I'm going to make a sphere. So here's the sphere. I'm going to click on it, much like we did with the cube, and I'm going to left click and drag. Okay, now it might look like we're getting just a, a basic circle. Okay, but if we wanted a basketball or a soccer ball, a sphere, we click on the blue cross in the center, and now we can add depth to that circle. Okay, just like that, just like that. Now, if we wanted it to be perfectly circular, just make sure that on the radius channel over here, that all three of these values are the same. I'm just, I'm just going to do a little copy and paste. And then I hit return, and there we go. Now we have a perfect circle. If we increase the sides, we can increase the overall geometry and resolution of our sphere uh, along these guys in here were added. So we added the loops this way. And if we had uh, increased the segments before I, I accidentally dropped the tool, we would have added loops going this way. Okay. All right, so that's the sphere. Let's look at one more get rid of this guy real fast, and we're going to look at the cylinder tool, this guy right here. Now, the cylinder tool is very similar to the sphere as uh, as it starts off with a circle down here at the bottom, but instead of drawing out a basketball, the cylinder tool is a great way to start off with making pipes, something like this, okay? And very similar to the sphere, increasing the amount of sides, put this, put this like 30, just adds more uh, loops going around the, uh, the radius of our circle. And if we increase the segments, it's just going to add loops going along the height of our cylinder, like so. Okay, And like everything, we can make sure that it's positioned at 0, 0, 0. 
there we go, before we drop the tool. So we have some options in here that allows us to accurately place our object before we drop the tool, and that's, that's kind of cool. Now, I'll let you explore some of these other unit primitives, um, but uh, there's one other one that I want to show you, and it's the pen tool. The pen tool is infinitely um, useful inside of Moto, and the pen tool allows us to create a custom shape, a custom unit primitive. And with the pen tool selected, I can just click in my viewport, and wherever I click is going to add a vertice inside my shape, kind of like that. And as soon as I hit the space bar, now I have a custom shape that I that I've of course I can move, I can rotate it if I wanted to, and of course, like any object, I can make it bigger or smaller. So the pen tool is another primitive that I just love to use. It's really helpful. We're going to devote an entire video later on on the pen tool because it is so widely used inside of the workflow in Moto that it deserves its own. Another great one to explore is the type tool where you can make 3D text, and I'll let you guys explore that. Um, one other thing. If you look at these icons right here, this is something that you find all over Moto. If there's a little dark arrow in the lower right-hand corner of that icon, if that means there's a nested tool inside this button. So if we left-click and hold, you can see that the sphere tool really is two. It's the sphere and ellipsoid tool. Um, the cylinder tool, same thing. We can do a cylinder or a capsule. So look for these little dark arrows the little nested tools that help you uh, or that will have more than one tool. And it's, it's a little helper to let you know that, hey, there's something else kind of nested inside this button, like the rotate has a rotate and axis rotate all in one, okay? So those are the unit primitives. I think you're going to find these uh, to be really helpful. Oftentimes, these little unit primitives up here are the building blocks for more complex geometry, as in uh, a good starting uh, point in 3D modeling is to start with a very simple shape like a cube or a cylinder or a sphere, and then, uh, then and expand and edit that shape into something that's more complex. So these are the primitives. I hope they hope you find them useful and I think you're going to find that you're going to be using them all the time. Unit primitives. Pretty cool.